Good day, everyone. My name is Rishwa Ketu Simelani. Welcome to Cells, the Basic Units of Life, Grade 10 Life Sciences. We are going to be looking at the cell structure and function, also focusing on the role of organelles, specifically the cell wall, cell membrane, nucleus, and the cytoplasm. Make sure that you have everything you need, your notepad and your pen, before we begin. Doesn't it fascinate you how a microscopic structure such as a cell is able to control or play such a big role in organisms? Today, we are not only going to be looking at the molecular makeup of a cell, but we are also going to be looking at organelles or the cell components that make it possible. We are going to be looking at the cell structure and the function and the roles of the following structures, the cell wall, the cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to know the following, the cell structure and the function, the roles of the cell wall, cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. Without any further ado, let's go to the summary of presentation. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in the, in the presentation is the revision. We're going to be revising the work that we did on the previous uh, grades or the work that we did on the previous lesson. We are going to be going back on the definitions of the cell. We are going to be going back on the whole basics of what created a cell or what is a cell made of. We will also move on to the structure, definition, and function of each cell component, looking at the cell wall, cytoplasm, cell membrane. So on the cell membrane, we are going to be focusing on the fluid mosaic model, diffusion, osmosis, active transport. So we all know that grade 10 life sciences, it's, uh, it's the foundation of grade 11 and grade 12. So when we be doing fluid mosaic model, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport, we will be uh, doing it on a touch and go basis. But that information is going to be very crucial on other grades. We will finish off with what? With the nucleus. After we are done with the structure, def uh, definitions, and the functions of the components, we will have an activity, and then I will conclude the presentation. So we all know that cells are made up of many organic compounds as discussed earlier on. Uh, those compounds being proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. And we know that there are small structures within the cell that carry out various functions. And those structures are called organelles. So cells are organized in such a way that they form very efficient and complex organisms. So we are going to define an organelle. An organelle is a small structure or small structures that are found in the cell that carry out various um, functions. So examples of organelles, we are talking about your ribosome, your nucleus, your uh, ER, etc., etc. So we're going to be looking at every single organelle as we go on. And then a cell, the cell is the basic unit of life. So we know that we have two types of cells. We have the microscopic cell and we have the macroscopic cell. So today or, or on this lesson, we are going to be focusing on the microscopic cell, be it your plant cell and your animal cell. We call them microscopic cells because they cannot be seen with the naked eye. We need a microscope and we, or, or we can only view them under a microscope. Cells have a different shape and structure. We are going to be looking at the structure and the shape of the plant and the animal cell. So we know that the plant cell has a regular shape. This is because it contains a cell wall. A regular shape means that the shape can be named. It can either be called a circle, square, or rectangle, etc. Rather, on the other hand, the animal cell has an irregular shape, meaning that the shape cannot be named and it may change or may be changing. So this is because an animal cell does not contain a cell wall. So we are going to be looking more at the cell wall on the next slide. So this means that we are done with our revision. We looked at the definition of the cell. We looked at the definition of the organelle. We looked at what the cell is made of, and we also looked at the different structures 
and the shapes of both the animal and the plant cell. We are going to be discussing the structure, the function, and the role of the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid outer layer of plant cell, meaning that it can only be found in a plant cell and not in an animal cell. This has already been discussed on the previous slide. It surrounds the cell membrane. The cell wall is a non-living uh, substance or it's a non-living structure that is made up of cellulose, a polysaccharide. This also supports what we already discussed that a cell is made up of organic compounds as cellulose is an example of a carbohydrate. It is completely permeable to water and mineral salt. So the function of the cell wall is to provide protection. It provides all the content of the cell with protection since it is found outside the cell. It encloses the cell, it gives the cell shape, it provides a framework and support for the cell. The cell wall is permeable so it, it is involved in transport, allow most substances to pass through. So be careful here, it does not allow all the substances to pass through, rather it allows most of the substances to pass through. We are moving on to the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that fills the cell. It contains up to 90% of water. It also contains dissolved nutrients and waste products. So we hear from this that a, a, a cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that fills the cell, meaning that all the organelles are where are found in the cytoplasm. Your ribosomes, your endoplasmic reticulum should be found or can be found in the cytoplasm since it is a jelly-like substance that helps or uh, 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 maintains the organelles. It keeps the organelles in place. So the function of the cytoplasm is to hold together the organelles which make up the cytoplasm, what I already explained. It also nourishes the cell by supplying it with salt and sugars and provides a medium of metabolic reactions to occur. We are now discussing the cell membrane. The cell membrane sur uh, surrounds the cytoplasm. It is part of the protoplasm which is a living part of the cell. The cell membrane consists mostly of lipids and protein molecules. It is semi-permeable and controls the movement of substances into and out of the cells. So remember, the plant cell contains a cell wall, then a cell membrane, then a cytoplasm. But then an animal cell only contains a cell wall, then, oh, sorry, a cell membrane, then a cytoplasm. So this means that the cell membranes provide a protection for the content of the uh, of the animal cell because it is the outmost layer. So we can say that the function of the cell membrane is to provide protection in what in the animal cell only. The most important function of the cell membrane is to control and it is to control the entry and the exit of certain substances. Remember, the membrane is what is semi-permeable. It only allows certain substances only to pass through. We are moving on to the fluid Mossack model. The fluid uh, Mossack model basically describes the arrangement of lipids and protein molecules in a membrane. The protein molecules are, rep are randomly embedded into the phospholipid bilayer. This contributes to the mechanical strength of the membrane. Each protein molecule shifts around the fluid uh, bilayer of phospholipid. So this is the structure. This is the structure of what? Of the fluid Mossack model. This is what we call the fluid Mossack model. So here we can see the phospholipid layers. Here we can see the, the intercellular and the extracellular. So this is what we basically have to know. The arrangement of lipids and proteins in a what? In, in, in a membrane. So we are going to be moving on to the movement across membranes, specifically the cell membrane. 
So substances need to enter and leave the cell in order for the cell to carry out its function, right? For example, waste substances like carbon dioxide need to leave the cell and glucose needs to enter the cell for cellular respiration. These substances need to move across the membranes of the cell in order for them to enter and leave a cell. There are three ways in which a substance can enter and leave a cell. These three ways are diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. So diffusion is the movement of particles from a high area, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down to the concentration gradient. Diffusion will, will continue until all molecules are spread out evenly and a state of equilibrium is reached. Diffusion occurs in living and non-living systems and it is an example of passive transport. No energy is needed. So osmosis is the movement of molecules, of water molecules across a, selective, a selectively permeable membrane from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential down a water potential gradient until equilibrium is reached. So the difference between osmosis and diffusion, osmosis deals specifically with water molecules, the movement of water molecules until equilibrium is reached. Pure water has the highest water potential because there is no solute present to, uh, to lower the kinetic energy of the water molecule. Lastly, active transport. Active transport is the movement of substances through a semi-permeable membrane in a living cell against a concentration gradient. Energy in the form of ATP is needed. So in compared to diffusion, active transport requires energy for it to occur. We are now looking at the last organelle or the last cell component. The nucleus is the largest organelle in the cell and contains all the cell's genetic information in the form of DNA. The presence of the nucleus in the, in the cell is a primary factor that distinguishes eukaryotes from prokaryotes. So we are going to be looking at the structure of the organelle. So the organelle contains other structures within them. So we're going to be looking at every structure and its function. So we have the first one, which is the nuclear membrane. So the nucleus is bound by a double membrane called the nuclear membrane. So this is our nuclear membrane. This is our nuclear membrane. Remember, the nuclear membrane surrounds, it surrounds the, the particular nucleus. So basically, the definition of a membrane is anything that surrounds an organelle or a cell. So we know that a cell membrane surrounds the, the cell. Its function is to control the movement of substances going in and out of the cell. So similar to that, the nuclear membrane controls the movement of substances going in and out of the what? Of the nucleus. So we can also further establish or further discuss that it was, it is semi-permeable. It doesn't allow all substances in, it doesn't allow all substances out. We are moving on to a nuclear pole. So the nuclear pole will be found in on the nuclear membrane. So our nuclear membrane will have those pores in them that allows or it's where the, 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 the substances will move in or out. These pores allow substances to enter and leave the nucleus. Within the nuclear membrane, there is a ground substance called a nucleoplasm. So a nucleoplasm, it is the inside or the content. It is the jelly-like substance inside what? inside the nucleus. This is where we would find it. Then the other two uh, structures embedded in the nucleoplasm is what we call a, nuclear, a, a nucleus and, a, uh, and the chromatin network. The nucleus is a darkly stained body found in the center of the nucleoplasm, which contains free nucleotides based and produces ribosomes. So this is our nucleus. 
this is where ribosomes are created or are produced and then we have lastly the chromatin network so the chromatin network is a tangled mass of thread-like structure contains the dna which forms the chromosomes containing the genetic code of a person so they are tangled mass found where on the nucleoplasm in the nucleus so they are here and they contain the dna that makes up a human or an orgasm an organism these thread-like structures are called chromosomes right so we know that the chromatin network is made up of a tangled mass thread like structures those mass tangled structures are called chromosomes so the function of the nucleus is to control all activities of the cell it is basically the heart or the brain of the cell it controls the production of enzyme it is responsible for the transmission of hereditary characteristics from parents to offspring so we know that the nucleus contains dna dna is responsible for the hereditary characteristics so it is responsible for transmitting hereditary characteristics from parent to offspring since we already discussed all the organelles and the cell components uh, for this presentation now we move on to the activity so you're going to give yourself 10 minutes to do the activity and then after move to the second slide where you will get the answer so feel free to pause the video so that you are able to do the activity truthfully the cell is regarded as the basic unit of life it consists of several organelles that ensures its effective functioning discuss the statement with reference to the structure and the role of the cell membrane and the nucleus so you're going to get 15 marks overall so 12 marks for content and then three marks for synthesis so basically the three marks is writing in point form so you're going to have your cell membrane and then you write in point form the structure uh, of the cell membrane and the role of the cell membrane and also move on to the nucleus the structure of the nucleus and the role of the nucleus so you're going to get seven marks for the cell membrane and then uh, five marks for the nucleus and then the three is for synthesis so don't forget to give yourself 10 minutes for you to be able to do the activity the answer will be in the next slide this is the first part solution of the activity uh, make sure that you align what you wrote with the answers mark yourself truthfully and highlight where you made a small mistake so that you don't repeat the mistakes in future so give yourself uh, four marks for the structure and then three marks for the role of the cell membrane you have to also include the fluid mossad model since it also uh, explains the, the structure of the cell membrane. This is the second part of the solution. Make sure that you check your what you wrote with the answers here. Do not cheat yourself. Make sure that you highlight every mistake that you made and try to learn from it. Award yourself a mark if you wrote in point form. Award yourself three marks for writing in point form. Then if you did not write in point form, you will forfeit that particular mark, the three marks. You don't get one, you don't get two, you forfeit the three marks. We have come to the conclusion of the lesson of our presentation. We talked about the structure, the function, and the role of organelles in the cell. In the next lesson, we will focus on other organelles, our ribosomes, our mitochondrion, our ER, etc., etc. We will also look at the structure, the function, and the role of each and every part, each and every particular uh, organelle. We will have a question and answer session based on the topic. Thank you so much.